Okay, well that was kind of a mess. Um, forgive me, I kind of was in a bit of a hurry. Something came up a little bit before I was scheduled to go live. Kind of had to really throw this together hastily. But it looks like we're good. I'm just in time. So here we go. We've got Ink Nun versus Arcane. Oh, I've got the wrong frame though. Oh no! <laughs> you can tell I was, um, I'm trying to get this together really quickly. Um, apologies for the, I mean, you know, stunning amount of professionalism you're seeing right now. But, uh, don't worry, we'll get right back to being, a uh, streaming god soon enough. Let's see. Let's get our new overlay, our crystal, because this is a crystal matchup between Akane and Ink Nun. Uh, we need to resize that and move it down. There we go. Much better. Hello, everyone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is crystal tier match between a cane and ink nun. A cane uh, being one of the new promoters here, uh, just fresh out of obsidian tier from last week, and uh, ink nun. Definitely being no stranger, although it's his first time for, for a pretty long time that he's participated in Condor event. Um, but it's, you know, it's great to have him back because Zing Nun, uh, as always, super skilled racer. Um, you know, very off, very frequent world record holder in a lot of speedrunning categories. So, and not really exhausted, just uh, more, <laughs> more uh, kind of had to throw this together in a hurry because, um, yeah, again, something came up, uh, you know out in that real life thing and I kind of had to rush here but uh, glad I could uh, sort of make it here in time okay um, all right and uh, god damn it the community th the commentary thing isn't working right I'll look at it after this set uh, this set but at any rate, uh, Coral Rift one down, and we've got a really quick uh, Electric Dagger here. Electric Dagger Frost, a pretty interesting combination. Um, Ring of Frost, very strong, makes pretty much even uh, you know any weapon good. Even low damage daggers like the Electric Dagger. Um, but the Electric Dagger is already pretty good in itself. Um, you know, the two damage it does on the direct poke is not really the important part about the Electric Dagger. The important part is the fact that. And essentially gives you a constant conduit effect, like the, uh, like in uh, Zone Five. So can really easily just uh, clear out huge swarms of enemies because you're always going to be getting that chain lightning effect. Um, Ink Nun here, slow playing, playing a bit, getting the uh, golem to open up this uh, glass shop for him, and that's going to let him get this potion, which is really nice for him. Um, Kane swapping off to the Obsidian Axe. Uh, definitely a very strong weapon, especially with that Ring of Frost. Um, you know, I think uh, the dagger of the Electric Tiger will still be able to compete relatively well with this. It's such a strong weapon, but uh, Ink Nun also going to swap off of the Electric Dagger for the Obsidian Axe, and is going to be right behind a cane. A um, little bit slower, but with a much safer build. Oh boy, and now we're really getting uh, getting spicy here. A quick leaping find in uh, three one here for a cane. We're probably going to be seeing Ink Nun. Oh no, Ink Nun looks like uh, going to take a different route here and going to miss that. Um, and the cane almost immediately going down. Leaping being uh, pretty tough to use, especially when it's with a, a move attack weapon like the axe. Um, it's really hard to know exactly when you're going to move one or two tiles. And. Um, so now Ink Nun doing a little shopping here, getting the spiked ears, really nice combination with the uh, obsidian uh, equipment, gonna guarantee a minimum of three damage so long as he uh, doesn't drop his uh, multiplier at any point um, to missing a beat. The spiked ears will survive if he, take, if he drops his multiplier by taking damage, but uh, missed beats are a no-go. Yeah, the something like in my scramble to fix the the widget, uh, it turned off voice activity push uh, talk and went to back to push to talk. So let me fix that. There okay, you go. yeah, there we go. I I don't know why the OBS scene messed up, but hey, Mac. <laughs> What's up? Uh, Pretty yep. serious. Oh, uh, yeah, I came though uh, having problems with the uh, trapdoor room here, and uh, 
Brief. So back down to half hard again. Yeah, pretty spooky. Really not what you want when you're you're trying to push from behind here against Ink, who is not only a phenomenal racer, but has an exceptional build as well. And oh yeah, okay, and I think going on tilt here. Uh Corif won, you know, a pretty uh you know, pretty tried and true methods for that boss fight there. But um going down to Coral Rift. Oh, there goes that curse heart for Ink. Would have been a nice kind of little uh, icing on the cake. Doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't. Really frankly, if you didn't tune in to watching Unslow play, then why did you tune in at all? Exactly. I'm, I'm just saying. I, I thought there that was the no whole point. Form here. of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna spend some time in the transmog. You know, doing exactly what you should do when your opponent goes down in the late game like that, just slowing down and really solidifying your build. Um, has gone to a really safe build at this point. Played armor. Um, Ekane getting himself fireballed. Uh, you know, struggling with zone one. Yeah, and I mean, you do sometimes see this from even experienced racers when they're under pressure, they're trying to push um, just to try and catch up. They'll they'll just make silly mistakes, like taking damage to to enemies <laughs> early. Ink done with this barrel Ink, mimic. My lord. <laughs> The classic England slow play that we've all come to love. He's eventually going to secure that bomb, but uh, a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> he's he's doing his best. And yeah, continuing to solidify his build here. Lead boots going to protect against the uh, the ooze golems here. Uh, Shovel of strength giving him a little bit more of a damage increase, uh, making up in part for the fact that he apparently lost those spike deers at some point. Yeah, I think he lost them um, on on four one. I seem to remember because I'm sure he had them going into the zone. Uh, and I mean, just kind of as an indicator of how safe Ink is playing this, he transmuted in four one to get himself a a blood shovel and then went back um, and was like, nah. <laughs> Immediately after you say that about a safe play, he uh, blunders onto a kind of obscured confused trap and takes like all the damage in the world. What is wrong with me in these last... Well, basically in the last week. If I say anything, it just... Just people start dying. And yeah, there's a hit to a Goblin Bomber in the uh, Kanga 4 fight. Ink's got this in the bag. <laughs> well, I mean, you saying that, though, I mean, uh, Aken was just parked in the death screen onto one there for a little while, so... Uh... Yeah, it just needs to kind of dust himself off here. Uh, no waffles, that is absolutely correct. Uh, Crate and Barrel Mimics will always drop one bomb. Yeah, which I, I don't hate. It would be nice to have some variety, but I, I don't hate it. I mean, I think I think the idea behind them probably being to just make that, you know, those bomb finds a little bit more rel reliable for Cadence. Make uh, being forced to, uh, you know, touch butts a little bit less of a common occurrence. Yeah, that's fair. And it's also an added incentive. In fact, Ring of Luck doesn't change how many bombs they drop. There you go. There's an incentive to go get your lucky charm, if that was the fact. Yeah, I can with a really nice uh, slow push through zone 5 here. Ex excellent uh, weapon for zone 5, just gonna let you walk down the center of that hallway and mow everything down. Yeah, Axe in zone 5 is just, it's its not mindless by any means, but um, it really does simplify a lot of the issues that can come from, uh, from those corridors. Making good use of the free scroll there, just popping it in for, you know, free walk to the uh, exit there. Works really well with the uh, the frost ring. Although that said, you know, that free scroll could have been used here for a really easy dead ringer kill, but gonna get an easy yeah. dead ringer kill regardless. Exactly, you were gonna see him lure anyway, um, or the, you know, if it's left side, then then you can do, especially with this build, you can do the fast strat without even batting an eyelid. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. But on the necrodancer, it looks like he only has two bombs though, so we're gonna be seeing some butts. But with two, you only need to do those first two. You can just bomb out the loot and the Necrodancer from this point on. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna bomb out the loot first. The safer option, definitely what you do in this situation. You know, you don't need 
you don't need to go fast here. You just need to survive. And he's in a good position to do so. He can take a fair few hits with that uh, plate armor and the potion in tow. Yeah, bombing out the Necromancer first will, you know, uh, transition you to the faster tempo song earlier. So it's the slightly faster option. Also involves a little bit less backtracking around the stage. But um, obviously you can't do anything about the Necromancer when you don't have the loot. So he's just kind of free to roam around, uh, summon enemies, uh, maybe get a few bombs Generally off. Generally make your life unbearable. Uh, so it's definitely the riskier option to bomb first. So, yeah. Correct call here to just bomb out the loot first and then backtrack to bomb out the Necromancer. And yeah, gonna and finish the site. Can... Finish this out. And I mean, that's a 10-21 that's a for Ink, so slow played it as he as he should have and didn't get himself into too many spooky situations. There was that uh, moment in Zone 4 where um, he, he did bad things trying to get that bomb, but apart from that, pretty solid. <laughs> Yeah, just kind of stumbling with the good fusion trap in that 4-1 or 4-2, was it? And then a little bit of a spicy situation with a confused trap behind a uh, bomb gargoyle. But other than that, yeah, that net, yeah pretty easy with for ink none here. And... That's my favorite, when things are just hidden. Oh yeah, I love it. I, I wish every sprite in the game was large so that things could just, you know, hide behind them. Here's what to do. You turn everything into just like a black box, as high and wide as it can be, and you put the original sprite slap bang in the middle. <laughs> that seems like a brilliant design choice. Uh, you should, uh, they should hire you as the new designer, you know? Absolutely. Don't know why they brought in this blue blimp guy. Yeah, who the hell, What what is a blue blimp anyway? Come on now. It's a blimp that's blue, presumably. Simply ridiculous. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> Not for a damn second. I, I mean, I know it's shocking and hard to take in, but, you know, this is, uh, sometimes this is how the world works. I'll be dead in the ground before I take anything at face value. <laughs> that's fair. I want evidence. <laughs> Um, so, both the racers, pretty identical builds here. Uh, Akane actually just gonna blow off this trans. Or, okay, wait, backtracking, going for it again. And, uh, okay, both racers just gonna go get their battle shovel here. Yeah, Akane gonna take the, the extra transmog and get off of the, uh, the quartz armor. Gets rewarded pretty well with that plate, much, much better. Oh no, um, Ignan! Oh, just getting scared of the red bat! I'm gonna back off, I think now you take the glass shrine here. There you go. Absolutely the right choice. I mean, ultimately, uh, probably going to see him go. Uh, oh, black oh chest there's anyway. becoming on the floor of the trans <gasps> Oh, man. <laughs> You're going to see him going back for wonder. It's a pretty big time sink here, but um, it could pan out. I mean, Ring of Wonder is decent for speedruns, but not the greatest. I mean, ultimately, depending on. Let's see. So oh, okay. 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 <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. <laughs> There's a glass rapier out of that transmog. Um, and, oh, but yeah, we might even see him immediately swap off this Ring of Wonder, though, because it looks like there is a Ring of Piercing in the boss chest. And honestly, for racing, I think that might be better. Yeah, especially with this glass build. Ultimately, that Ring of Wonder is not... Oh, and that Obsidian Cat coming favorites. up, too. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh. oh my, okay. Interesting, Ink, no, no, going going for a weapon swap and getting the Titanium Rapier here. Yeah, a little bit risky as well to go for that. Didn't didn't have any idea, but with this Ring of Wonder, a really, really nice find. So, plus two damage. But yeah, even with, the the one, armor. even with the Wonder, though, I think I like a Kane's build better. Obsidian Cat Piercing is so good. This is true. I now with a, a plus two cat though, like this is close. You have two great weapon choices here. Um, it's it's hard to say which one is going to save you more time. I mean, the weapon choice isn't isn't the concern here. They're on the same one. Oh, sorry, it's like the, the ring. combination. Yeah, the exactly. combination is more what I meant. Oh, there's darkness. Can't take it though. That ring too good. Yeah, Kane gonna save his bomb here and just uh, mash down the conga lines, which I think is a totally fair thing to do here. Uh, we'll see what he goes for here. Might go for red. Try and get a blast helm or something. 
I'm gonna go purple and getting a wonderful oh. Ring of Charisma. And uh, Inkman yeah. not seeing it on the stream soon enough, but uh, I get the same thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I know Ink has like, he's not the greatest fan of uh, of RTMP strats. So I I imagine he would screen watch regardless, but uh, maybe didn't want to wait the extra couple of weeks. He has caught right up to a cane. It must be said, right on his tail. Yeah, both of them kind of going the wrong way on this 3-2 here, though. I mean, Blast Torch only gonna, you know, give you little red dots to try and give you a, a tip on where to uh, where to head. And usually you just go to the biggest clump of them, but, um, you know, sometimes with Zone 3 layouts being kind of the weird way they are, uh, it's not always easy to tell which clump of red dots is the right one. Exactly. There can be four corners of hell in, in a Zone 3 floor, not just one. Uh, but Inknon overall with the better uh, better reads here. Um, I mean, does have the glass torch, and so a cane does not have that little bit of uh, you know guidance with the highlighting of the enemies to go with. But um, yeah, Inknon understandably coming out on top as far as zone three mapping is concerned, gonna be leading the charge here. Yeah, that quick trap door in three three as well was critical. A cane just he didn't dig up to find it. Um... And I I understand him not doing that considering he doesn't have the doesn't have the kind of visibility that Ink had, but it's it's just it's it's one of those things. And now we've got um, a miner's cap on a cane side. Looks like uh, Ink unbreaking his shovel, um, so and his glass torch for that matter. Yeah, so I, his build hasn't evaporated, but it's definitely a lot weaker now. Uh, uh, I came just getting telemonkeyed everywhere. Could check this uh, this shop up here. It's a monster shop. Could be like you know a free uh, blast helm or something in there. Um, although looks like he did pick up some bombs in this last couple floors, so uh, it does have enough bombs. Isn't in dire need of them anymore. He finally gets off a of 4-1. Like you said, those telemonkeys not doing him any favors. This is probably where you're going to see Ring of Piercing really shine here, and also in Zone 5 with the Arcs. Um, these Blade Masters just aren't going to be a problem at all. Yeah, exactly. Ring of Piercing is so strong in the late game. Okay, he's going to grab this fourth bomb. I don't know if I agree with that. You have a shield spell, and three is enough. I think you can just leave that and go. Oh, Ink Nun having some real problems with this swarm here. I'm going to scoot around here, but uh, giving that cane the chance to catch up here, and it's it's within a, a hand, small handful of beats here. Yeah, probably no more than five, and it looks... Oh, it's, I was about to say it looks like a cane might be done first, but forgot that uh, Ink Nun has, has Ring of Wonder. And now we're seeing um, oh, a cane getting this potion for free, and also a much quicker route to the exit because that miner's cap. Yeah, just able to dig right on through. This is a really, really nice build for Zone 5. You kind of mitigate a lot of the problems with the miner's cap in Zone 5 because of that ring of piercing. Um, I often find myself just getting surrounded by arcs and not really able to push past them. That ring of piercing just makes them completely trivial. And he's past Ink Up. Yeah, just barely though, Inknon making a little bit of ground back on that 5-2. Okay, good blood shield from a cane there, exactly what you need to do. And I oh, that God. is perfect That's sync on my <laughs> end. They are starting Deadwinger at the exact same moment as far as I can tell. Yeah, maybe like a matter of frames if that, but these guys, <laughs> wow, are just seriously neck and neck. And oh my <laughs> same God, for the again. Necrodancer. I mean, it was the right side spawn, which is a very consistent strat. It's going to almost always take the same amount of time, but still. Um, and both of them just tanking bombs here. Okay, it's going to come down to teleports and lures. Kane with the first hit. I think Inknon has a slight lead here. I'm um, kind of missing this lore here, though. Um, getting body blocked by skeletons a bit. Oh my god, this is so close. Kane gets his and... final head off. I think he's got it. Yeah, it's so super close, but... Yeah, oh, I think Kane took that one. 
hopefully, you know, difference, you know, differences in like stream delay or something, not uh, not telling lies here, because uh, that might be the case here. Let's have a little look. Yeah, have uh, the yeah, you have look at, you can look at the race channel. Uh, what are we seeing in there? The dot done time. There was a difference of two point two, sorry, two point nine nine seconds. And in a Kane's favor. In a Kane's favor, yes. Wow, very, very close. Yeah, that's insanely close, <laughs> and just an incredible race. So after a bit of a weak start, a Kane answering right back um, with a bit of a nail biter, but pulls out the win nonetheless. Um, Piercing and Wonder may be showing themselves to be uh, on pretty even footing. Um, although, you know, there is, of course, the matter of, you know, mentality. I Kane maybe taking it a little bit easy in the early zone, too, when he saw he had, had a pretty big lead. Yeah, it wasn't the most efficient zone, too, for a Kane, but, um, you just credit where it's due to Ink. <laughs> for being so far behind, was able to push back and, and take a Kane right down to the final boss within a, a matter of seconds. Oh, this start... Oh yeah, Battle this Shovel Boots Pain, spicy. pretty solid one. Yeah, Inkmas, he's gonna miss out on the on the Boots of Pain, didn't Shovel open that uh, that barrel. Kane's gonna grab the Shopkeeper from Ogi here as well. It's it's a nice little addition, for half a heart that's gonna definitely put it. Uh, yeah, I think I think that's worth right. grabbing. Um, agree with the sentiment on skipping on the Titanium Whip as well. You don't really need the extra damage when you've got those Boots of Pain, and they're just gonna get you hung up a lot, and you're probably going to miss a lot of potential pain hits. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you if nothing else, you get to keep your dagger if it's a if it's a boss that you can throw on. Uh, and having those boots of pain really does open up um, more uh, more opportunities to throw as well. Deep Blues. Deep Blues throwing is, for a cane, it's viable for uh, all thanks to those boots of pain. We're seeing a cane get a little bit extra stuff. Oh, Inknun trying to mash through this deep blues fight quickly, though, uh, with the heart transplant and uh, taking a hit, so no flawless here. Yeah, a cane's not going to throw here. I mean, it's not guaranteed. It could still spook you pretty bad, but uh, a fast enough deep blues. Oh, that's... Not going to heal on the boss goal. A cane. A cane, a cane. Come on, man. Come on. Let him say <laughs> down. Okay, yeah, gonna go for the five damage long sword here. Gonna be giving up those boots of pain for the most part, since it's pretty hard to proc them when you've got a long reach attack. But um, I think ultimately correct decision there. Five damage yeah, long I mean, sword is uh, I'm to sneeze at. Exactly, and again, you're reaching one of those kind of critical damage and, barriers um, with the five. Ink none. Meanwhile, uh, getting kind of bailed out after the uh, after. The spill he took on Deep Blues, uh, finding an immediate glass shrine. So, at least has a you know has damage for his build. Although this two-two layout is uh, looking pretty terrible. Yeah, man. Just zone two can either be a dream or one of the worst things you'll see in your run. Well, man, both racers taking that uh, miner's cap. Uh, a cane with the uh, the dream. The fireworks build, the meme cap build, miner's cap, infernal oh. torch. I love memes. That's a good weapon swap for a cane as well. Uh, makes this miner's cap a bit less scary. Ooh, you bring um, that glass then. Okay, shovel crazy. courage. Not really doing much with that miner's cap. It does not proc off of the um, off of the AOE dig from the miner's cap. So, um. I think none might want to consider trying to get a new hat. Maybe checking red here. I'm not gonna go for purple, red. getting the Ring of Frost. It's not bad. I. It's not gonna help him catch up all that much considering he's already running a weapon, which when you have your multiplier up is doing three damage. Um, it came with a four, which is no, no great advantage over it. 
Yeah, especially not gonna do any favors when you start uh, taking damage to hot coals as well. Ain't gonna uh, in a pretty scary health situation now. Although um, I can not looking much better himself. Yeah, down to a heart and a half. You do have to be a little bit careful. Although, you know, another close one. Both racers heading down to Kanga 3 at more or less the same time. Ain't done with a slight lead here. Both of them going to be able to just uh, dig out the throne with that uh, that Miner's Cap level 2 dig. It's always great when you have the opportunity to do that. And it's okay. a heal spell. That's basically exactly what they need. Yeah, it's going to answer both their prayers regarding their low health situations at the moment. Um... Especially a cane on top of that uh, shopkeeper familiar, gonna have no problems keeping his health up. And we're, um, yeah, Kane may be grateful that he took the time to get his lucky charm there, opening up a black bat cave. Um, could be pretty nasty if, he, if it weren't for the luck uh, protecting him against bat hits. Inkman taking the time to check his shop and give a cane a slight lead here, but only you know by about a beat or so. Both yeah, racers also really taking Ooh, these guys. that's a really great find for a cane. Uh, getting a, a gigantism scroll out of that Lord enemy, he's got a level two dig shovel and a miner's cap. He can just dig. Uh, he can move dig straight through the stage on the necromancer fight. Well, unless he swaps to that sort of telepathy, that is. You, oh, oh, you pe pe whoa. Pe pe cap. Whoa, that was close. What is this? <laughs> I came narrowly avoiding death there. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Missing the blood heal! <laughs> and blood healing at the start of 4 3. A cane is officially banned from using <laughs> any kind of blood magic. <laughs> Oh, I I don't think we've ever seen that happen before. It's always something that could happen, but <laughs> I just <laughs> I don't have the words. It's just <laughs> what do you say to that? I think with that I'm gonna have to take <laughs> leave for um for Tara versus Cyber. But uh, I'm glad that I could leave you on such a hot, tasty note. All right. <laughs> Um, take care then. <laughs> I'll I'll do my best, man. I'll do my best. <sighs> All right. So then, um, you know, uh, sorry, Kane, but you gotta admit that death was uh, pretty freaking hilarious. <laughs> uh, if I if I'm allowed a moment to be a little bit uh, less professional in my commentary here, <laughs> um. Yeah, Kane. Uh, yeah, after brushing himself on the, off on that first race, was yeah, was keeping pace super well. But oh, that's that, I. I'm having such a. Uh, I'm having a hard time coming up with the worst way to go. Uh, um, to just missing the blood heal window there. Oh, jeez. So yeah, now Inknun taking the time as usual, doing his uh, you know, shopping up. Swapping to the titanium rapier here. Um, and got heavy plate and boots of strength. That's a 3-5 rapier with the frost effect on top of that. Uh, looks like there's a potion over there as well. Uh, just gonna mosey on over there and pick that up for a little bit of extra safety. And yeah, just gonna be taking his sweet time with this, uh, with this zone 5. Shopkeeper is dead, so he can still, um, you know, even though he's going for safe play, he can pretty much just push straight through for the exit. Doesn't really need to be uh, going out of his way looking for any gear here. Oh, getting a little bit of a nasty spot with that shopkeeper ghost there. Uh, backing up though and handling it well. Losing the frost charm here though, but with that um Ring of Frost, he's just gonna walk in and one shot absolutely everything. Might have been wanting to save it for Deadringer here though. Uh just you know, take a hit and then poke Deadringer twice. Pretty easy fight. But um it is a right side spawn, so it is a really easy setup. Just gonna do the normal uh quick kill here. 
And on to the Necrodancer fight is Ink Nun. Very uh, quick stage clear with the grenade charm. Already two hits in. Necrodancer's showing some mercy there, only spawning a Dire Bat. Uh, definitely the weakest mini boss you can possibly spawn during this fight. I actually do kind of wonder why Dire Bat is even in the pool for that. Um, definitely seems very out of place. Blood Nightmare also, uh, yeah, probably one of the weaker ones overall. Uh, so long as it's not covering... You know, swarms making enemies hard to spot, but uh, pretty barren fight here. Not many enemies on screen, and that's gonna be that's it. A disaster. Oh, oh, hello. I love stream kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing the same thing you did with the uh, I did with Jack. What's up, Mac? <sighs> I'm gonna <sighs> well, go. Well, you came just in time for uh, to finish the set, though. But, okay, bye, bye, Mac.